It's Monday and the mailman came. Let's call this video Mail Call Monday. Get to it. So yes, Mailman came and brought me some stuff. Now, these particular albums, one of them was ordered a few weeks ago. It was one of the Amazon deals where I have been watching this album for, gosh, going on probably a couple years. You know, just waiting for the time to be right, for the price to be right. And of course, as you wait on reissue albums from a handful of years ago, the prices eventually start going up and you start making decisions on whether to buy them or whatever so i've been putting off on this one then all of a sudden the other day on amazon boom it plummeted for some reason to like 16 dollars. i'm like i don't get it this is not like i know amazon drops their prices on fairly new releases after a while to kind of clean out some inventory but this is a what six seven years ago anyway i don't i don't get why they dropped the price but i went ahead and jumped on it funny thing is it was out of stock they're like we're out of stock but we hope to get some more i'm like okay i just want to lock in this price and see if they honor it because <laughs> who knows if it's ever going to get back in stock and at that price because i haven't seen it usually drop below 25 dollars and i'm like okay so i did it and it's this i finally have on vinyl a copy of the elder music from the elder by kiss the one album that so many people don't like. This probably ranks up there as bad as Peter Chris's solo album that people hate from the Kiss catalog. But now I like this album. When it came out, yes, it was the first introduction to Eric Carr. Yes, it wasn't really that hard rocking. Yes, it was supposedly a soundtrack to a movie that never happened. Yes, it had a lot of weird theatrical stuff. Yes, it wasn't a Kiss album in the sense that it doesn't sound or anything like anything they've ever done. It's an experiment. Caused a lot of turmoil in the band. You know, rumor has it Ace never really even showed up except to do one song. Anyway, it was controversy issues. You know, the band was going through a rough time. When it came out, we didn't know all of that stuff because it wasn't like we had the internet. We knew there was issues. We know Peter was gone. We knew Eric was in. We just thought it was a new album by Kiss. And yeah, it doesn't sound like them. I don't know. I guess I'm one of those type people. Some people I know don't have the same capability, but I can look at a band's releases as individual releases and appreciate them for what they are. Some people really poo-poo a release because they're like, it doesn't sound like the band, or I don't like the change. And I admit, there are some bands that have made radical changes that I'm like, mm, I'm not so sure I like this. But given time, I start to appreciate it for what it is. And I start to enjoy it for what it is, usually. So I'm not saying that there haven't been times when things haven't really warmed up to me. But for some reason, back when this came out, I, you know, I didn't mind Dynasty. I didn't mind Unmasked. That whole series, you know, I, I, w I went with the changes and enjoyed what they did for what they did. And when this came out, I found lots of great songs. And I still rank this high in my mind as a go-to album that I really love going to, listen to. Now, sure, you know, it's not, it doesn't have any hardly one or two songs that sound like a classic Kiss song. But if you just, I like it. I don't know. I don't know. I know I'm probably a minority, though I do. Listen to people in the vinyl community. I find more and more people these days that appreciate this more and more. So I, I, in the past, it used to be everybody hated it. It was the most hated album in the world. But I'm finding a lot of love from a lot of people that talk about this. So I'm one of those. I wanted to get it on vinyl. I didn't mind if it was an original. I didn't mind if it was a reissue. I just couldn't find one that was under $25, $30. And it finally, again, it just fell into my lap at $16 brand new. And so I went ahead and grabbed it. So that came in. Now, these other two came out, reissued, been waiting for these for decades. <laughs> they were reissued. People were showing them. People were buying them. I wasn't finding them for prices that I wanted to pay. I couldn't find it locally in the store that I thought would have it for a fairly decent price. And finally, actually, I think I asked Scott Waters, and he gave me a, a site that I went to, and they were um, amazing prices, so I bought them. Unfortunately, they were out of stock. They had to order some more. They come from overseas. It took quite a few weeks. They finally got them in, and boom, they arrived today. And I'm talking about the reissues of the two. Well, they reissued a lot of the Trouble albums, but these are the two I needed because I do have the first two albums 
from prior reissues, not from this series. But these two, really hard to find on vinyl. You know, this one you'd pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for if you could find the original. This one's not much different, but not quite as bad. So reissues, I've heard great things on how great they sound. I needed these in my collection to now I've got all the first few albums. I'm not sure which ones, if any, I got to figure out which ones I might still be missing on vinyl because I've picked up, you know, uh, Plaza Greenhead and and some of those other ones that were reissued a handful of years ago. So anyway, much needed. Finally came in. I've heard that they sound great. I'm hoping that's the case. I will give them a spin probably today. Two amazing albums from Trouble. You know, Trouble, if you're not familiar with them, very much, you know, one of the early pioneers uh, of doom metal in the 80s as far as, you know, these types of bands go. And, you know, they got that doom sound that's not like the doom death where the vocals are really harsh that you hear nowadays when you associate doom with certain things. This is more melodic. It's like an 80s metal band, but with the really grungy guitars, almost Black Sabbath-y. So, yeah, you know, kind of like a Black Sabbath feel at times. I've loved the band since the 80s, since they first came out with the first Trouble album, which I guess is also called Psalm 9 nowadays, and have just been a big fan. And then when these came out, you know, they're a little different, a little different style, but this is probably still one of their best albums, and this is not far behind. So yeah, I, I haven't found a horrible album in the Trouble catalog. I've just, gone again, gone with the flow, any kind of minor changes they've made. And then, you know, the uh, singer... Eric Wagner ha did leave Trouble years ago, and he's done some other projects. The Skull, which sounds more because of him, sounds a little like Trouble. Uh, what is it, Black Finger? I can never find those very well on vinyl, but uh, the Skull ones I see all the time. I just haven't picked them up, and they're under $20, so i got to get those. So many things, though, coming out. So Anyway, great stuff. If you're, into, if you're into this kind of style, make sure you get these before they are gone. They have all been reissued on Hammer's Hammerhead 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 Records. And again, it's overseas, so you end up having to order from someplace that carries imports. Great stuff. That's all it is for now, though. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll be back. Rock on and rock hard.